Election campaigns are set to resume as the Independent National Electoral Commission makes an announcement. And as Nigeria battles COVID-19 and anticipates its upcoming elections, we ask what really is the role of the bar as part of Nigeria's judiciary? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the program. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has lifted the ban on campaigns by political parties ahead of the September 19 governorship election in Edo State. The INEC head of voter education in Edo, Timidi Wariowe, said campaign have officially commenced in the state. Still in Edo State, Governor Ganduje has vowed to ensure the victory of the APC in the forthcoming election, saying PDP is only supporting Obaseki because of its interest in the state's treasury. Joining us to discuss this is Festa Sukoye, INEC National Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, for more perspective on INEC guidelines. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. We also would be having a public affairs analyst, G.D. Benson, join us. Do we have him? Okay, uh, as soon as we uh, make connection, we will bring him on the program. Labour activist Kelly um, Ogbaloi is also uh, going to join us a little later. But for now, we have uh, Mr. Festus Okoye joining us for this uh, conversation. Uh, my first question will be, INEC has lifted the ban. Could you briefly highlight to us some of the guidelines that parties are expected to follow? Well, in, in relation to the Edo governorship election, uh, the ban on political activities uh, commenced on the 21st uh, day of uh, June uh, 2020. Uh, so from the 21st day of June 2020, uh, political parties can engage in rallies, they can engage in campaigns, and also engage in other activities relating or related to uh, canvassing for votes. Uh, but you know that um, this is an unusual election, and we are in a very unusual period, uh, a period that is called novel. Uh, so to that particular extent, the orthodox way of doing things uh, will no longer be available and applicable to political parties. Uh, so what we have done is to encourage political parties uh, to be more creative, uh, to be more innovative, and also to be more uh, dynamic in the choice of uh, campaign issues, in the choice of campaign rallies, in the choice of um, uh, what they do during this particular period. Uh, so we have encouraged them and we still encourage them uh, to follow all the guidelines and supplementary regulations that we have issued in relation to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, follow all the protocols initiated by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control and the various state governments, and also to make sure that they utilize as much as possible uh, the other platforms in terms of the social media, in terms of um, uh, printing posters, and also in terms of doing things that will not involve large gatherings. And if they have to involve large gatherings, they must make sure that the issue of social distancing is uh, encouraged and they provide hand sanitizers and other uh, personal uh, uh, protective uh, material uh, for all those who are going to be involved in the campaigns. All right. Um, I'm told that we have public affairs analyst Jide Benson joining us. Uh, thank you for your time uh, on the program. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we just um, had a, a quick conversation with uh, INEC um, voter education uh, chairman, and uh, he outlined some of the specific, uh, specific uh, guidelines for the uh, campaigns to commence. Uh, what is your take? What kind of campaign are you expecting to see in a period, on, I mean, unexpected period of uh, COVID-19? Oh, well, um, there's always been a clamor for issue-based campaign. And I think that um, Edo State presents an opportunity for the political class, the political parties, and the electorates to, 
to feel and to hear issue-based campaigns. As you know, um, a lot has been said about Edo State in the last um, in the last four months of thereabouts. So we have seen the water fight, if I can explain it that way. And now um, the die is about to be cast. Uh, we're getting to the home stretch. And so we're going to begin to see um, the gladiators firing from the hips. Um, I sympathize with INEC at this time. I listened to Mr. Okoye when he was talking about the issue of the kind of gatherings that he would expect the, the politicians to have, um, sharing um, hand sanitizers and um, observing physical or social distancing, depending on which one you choose to go with. Um, I don't see how that is going to play out because but the people want to see, the people are going to gather to get um, all manner of campaign materials. And uh, we saw when the governor decamped to the PDP on the day he went to the PDP office, there was everything but um, social distancing on that day. And the question really is who is going to enforce it when it is the lawmakers that are breaking the laws? Um, we're not doing very well with observing social distance at this time. And I'm sure sure that as the politicking gets into the injury time, um, social distance is going to be thrown away completely. Um, let me come back to Mr. Okoye. Um, it, Mr. Benson has expressed his sympathies on the challenges you are likely going to face. But let's, let's look at it. Um, these people that are going to be campaigning, um, how are you planning to ensure that these people follow the guidelines. If you are, that's not your responsibility, so responsibility, I'm suspecting that's what you're going to say. Is there a partnership between you and the Nigerian um, military or the police to ensure compliance to some of these guidelines? Now, um, um, I, I listen to Mr. Benson and um, I, I, I quite understand what he's uh, driving at. My own take and the take of the commission is that the candidates in this election, the political parties in this election, must take personal responsibility for their actions and for the health and say a political party can only get to power and govern people who are alive and not people who are dead. Uh, so if a political party decides to be reckless or if some candidates decide to be reckless and then endanger the health and safety of their people, when they assume power, those issues we confront them. So my own take is that the governors of the states where we are going to have elections must rise above their own personal and partisan political interests and take into consideration the health and welfare of the people as the paramount thing at this particular point in time. So they must arise beyond and above their personal and partisan political interests. Mr. Ako, if I may interject, <laughs> I you, 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 you and I know that our level of compliance yes. is pretty poor. Uh, we need some yes. measure of authority um, in order to ensure, um, enforce some of these rules. So is there any way you are um, collaborating with security agencies to help not to take over the process, but to ensure obedience to at least the minimum standard? What, what, what we have said and what our su supplementary regulations provide is that any political party that wants to carry out campaigns or carry out rallies at the local government level must give the electoral officer of that particular local government uh, uh, area a seven days notice of their intention to conduct rallies or campaigns. If the rally or campaign is going to take place at the state level, they must give the resident electoral commissioner of that particular state seven days notice of their intention to conduct rallies or campaigns and, and so on and so forth. Now, what is important is that we have what we call our policy on conducting elections in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. We also have our supplementary guidelines. We also have the federal government guidelines on what is permissible and what is not permissible. And then the states have also their own guidelines and laws on what should happen at this point in time. And some of these laws have been uh, uh, have, have sanctions. So we expect, one, the security agencies to make sure that no political party and no candidate breaks the law. Secondly, we, also, we are also going to be monitoring the level of compliance of political parties uh, to do some of these guidelines. And when we, be, we, we see or believe that they 
there's a conflict or they're overstepping their bounds, we are going to draw the attention to that and ask them to rectify it. And if they don't rectify it, then the security agencies will take over at that point in time because right. our business and our function is to organize and superintend the elections. All right, let's bring uh, Mr. Benson back into the conversation. Um, let me just ask, from your assessment of the situation uh, before now, all the things that played out, how prepared are you, um, do you think, rather, parties are to commence the campaign? The parties are prepared to commence the campaign in the manner that they've always done. I don't think that any one of them has any machinery or measure in place to factor in COVID-19 protocols, as Mr. Okoye has said. Again, I know that um, INEC has to say all of these things. And one of the things that Mr. Okoye said is that they would reach out to them to rectify. In effect, he has, he has stated that ANEC is to some extent incapacitated because the truth is I have seen the list of um, the list of governors and the high ranking party officials who are going to be in Edo State on the side of the APC and on the side of the PDP. I mean, these are people that are in quote untouchables. When these people gather to to conduct rallies for the candidates of the major political parties, they, they, I mean, they have more than enough security details attached to them. So on their own strength alone, I'm sure that they will be violating social distancing orders. Now, as I said, the parties are ready to carry out this. It's for them a normal exercise. And let's even talk about the followers, the people who are going to gather at these rallies. They will be there to earn a stipend. They will be there to get T-shirts, to get face caps and water and what have you. At this point in time, this is their opportunity to get their share of the state cake. They won't be bothered about COVID-19. Don't forget that there's still a large population of people out there who do not believe that there's coronavirus in our midst. Uh, how can people prepare? Basically, what kind of... Let's start with that. How can people prepare for this election, especially in these uncertain times? Well, I wish INEC had the powers to ban political rallies at such a time as this. And that in my estimation, is the only way to prevent such gatherings. Because of the peculiarity of these times, INEC, according to Mr. Kwe, has some supplementary measures that has been factored into the electoral law. One of them may be that there will be no political rallies. Um, the political gladiators should explore other avenues, billboards, radio, TV, social media, and what have you. At this point in time, you cannot, there's no, I don't, I don't see how feasible it's going to be to hold those rallies. The governor, uh, the, the political, the, the, the candidates are going to, to go from local government to local government, from say, one Tendera district to the other to talk to the people. You can't tell more than 20 people not to gather or 50 people. All I right. don't really see how it's going to work. And that's the reality that we're confronted with. Mr. Okoye, uh, could you react to that? Is that a consideration, banning of political rallies at this time? No, it's, it's not a consideration at all. And, and uh, Mr. Benson said it's not a consideration because uh, the issue of freedom of association, the issue of freedom of the press, and the issue of um, uh, freedom of speech are part of, part of our constitutional uh, jur jurisprudence. And the Independent National Electoral Commission does not have the political virus or the or the legislative competence uh, to um, uh, uh, violate or legislate on uh, constitutionally protected. But rights. Mr. Okoye, this but is going is, to be like a rally of plenty of people at a time, and there is um, a guideline now for our own security and safety not to exceed um, twenty people in a closed space or even an open space at a time. How will that play in now? No, no, no. The, the, the point I'm making is this. Under the constitutional framework, a state can make a law when there is a pandemic or when there is a threat to public health and public safety. And that is why so many of the states have what we call their own quarantine laws, regulating what should happen at a particular point in time. Now, the violation of those uh, regulations and the enforcement of those regulations and punishment for those regulations are outside the competence and outside the powers of the Independent National Electoral Commission. What we have said is that 
political parties should, on their own, develop their own guidelines on campaigns and rallies, and that these campaigns and rallies must, uh, the guidelines must conform uh, to the protocols issued by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, and also some of the guidelines and laws made by the various state governments in terms of stemming this pandemic. Now, the challenge is that he is saying, and I, I, I understand what he's saying, that some of the people who are supposed to be, uh, um, be at the forefront in making sure that laws are not violated are the ones who are going to be at the center of these campaigns. And so there will be anybody to regulate them. In that instance, the point I'm making is that political parties, the candidates, and their leaders must take personal responsibility in this trying period because this is a very, very novel period and a very uncertain period. <laughs> this issue of personal responsibility keeps reoccurring. But uh, let's, yeah. let's hold on to some faith that compliance will come from, uh, you know, a lot more persons taking uh, more responsibility. Uh, Mr. Benson, uh, tell us about the kind of uh, rhetoric Odo, um, Edo and Sun uh, Ondo people should welcome in this period of campaign. Uh, you alluded to that a little earlier, but I would like you to expand shade now. Well, um, <clears throat> for the sitting governors in both states, this is a time for them to give account of their stewardship. Um, don't forget that it was in the same Edo state that we once heard the father of the governor saying that when your child fails, you give him an opportunity to repeat. But I don't see that governance is such um, a platform. Um, in the last four years, both governors have had the opportunity to fulfill some of their campaign promises and so when they reach out to the people again, it is for them to be able to say, I promise this and I have done it up to this point or I have fulfilled all of my promises in this sector and what have you. And the next four years, if you give me an opportunity, I will take things further. Um, on the part of those who want to compete with them, who are angling to take over those seats, it's for them to say, look, I can do better. Um, in the light of the resources available to us, whether it is human resources, or financial resources or any other resources, um, given the opportunity, I can do better. Now, that is what ought to be. Is that right. what has always been? The answer is no. Is that what will play out? I doubt very much. But as I said at the beginning, this would be an opportunity for us to begin to hear issue-based campaign. Edo has been in the news every day in about, what, the last four or five months and you and I know why and we have Just seen politics. clips of campaigns in the last elections four years ago and it is very interesting that the two main people who ran four years ago are the two main people who are daggers drawn the only yes. thing is that now they have changed their dresses <laughs> indeed um Mr Okoye uh just before I let you go, I, I want to take your thought on the activeness of the um, other uh, political parties that are registered for this uh, election. We know that in total, 14 uh, political parties registered for the um, election in Edo State, but we only have APC and PDP in the news. Are these parties active? Have they um, fulfilled all the necessities uh, to participate in the election? Well, you know, um, as far as the Independent National Electoral Commission is concerned, we have 18 registered political parties in Nigeria. And out of that 18 registered political parties in Nigeria, 15 of them conducted party primaries, but 14 filed list of their nominated candidates. So all the political parties are equal, and we are going to treat all of them equally because the section 285 of the uh, um, uh, section 225a of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria has made it in such a way that a political party must satisfy a certain threshold in order to remain a political party and i know that these political parties that are in a those state um con uh, campaigning they also know that they must satisfy a certain threshold in order for them to remain relevant and in order for them to remain as political parties. So as far as the commission is concerned, there are 14 political parties uh, that will be on the ballot and all of them have equal existence, all of them have equal force and um, we are not going to recognize any big or any small party and we don't know that any party is more visible and the other is not visible. We know oh, okay. that 14 political parties are going to be on the ballot and that is what is important to the commission. 
All right, Mr. Benson, if you could just react to that in 30 seconds, because I have a closing question for you as well. My first reaction is that, that in every race, you have contenders and you have pretenders. Um, as much as possible, we all know who the real contenders in this race are. And we, we know those who want to be referred to as also run, also run. We know those who want to be referred to as um, former governorship or gubernatorial candidates. So it's really a two horse race. Um, INEC must do its job as the umpire to um, feature all 14 political parties. But um, we have a clear idea of um, who the two front, who is likely to be the governor in Edo State and in Edo State afterwards. I, I would really like for us to explore the issues of these, um, I wouldn't say, um, I'm trying to look for the appropriate word to describe these parties that not a lot is known about them, but that would be a conversation for another day. Um, this question has to come in. Uh, it seems a bit odd, but would you kindly react to the latest uh, from the APC PDP Bikarin? APC's campaign chair, that's Gandujay, Governor Gandujay, um, says the power of incumbency brought Obaseki uh, the PDP ticket. Is there any relevance to this um, line of thought? Mr. Benson, please. Oh, okay. So that for me is something that we should be careful about. Um, I hope that the people of Edo State would allow their will to prevail. They will not just vote, they would also defend, defend their votes. Um, yes, the power of incumbency, as um, the Kano State Governor said, may have contributed to um, um, Governor Baseki's getting into the government house. But we've also seen instances where the power of incumbency failed. So okay. it, is ultim it ultimately should be left to the people of Edo State to decide who governs them. Um, the utterances like that from Governor Ganduji are one of the things that I imagine that, that INEC would caution, emphasis on caution, because I think that's the best they can do. Um, okay. um, utterances such as that is what INEC should caution um, Governor okay. Ganduji from making. Um, that's the much time will permit us on the, this part of the program. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Mr. Okoye, uh, for your time, we appreciate it. Thank you. And Mr. Benson, thank you as well. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a very short break. And when we return, we'll proceed to discuss the role of the Nigerian bar in today's Nigeria's development. Do stay with us. <laughs>